Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to Babe and Library. It's your girl Lisa and today is the start of a weekend reading vlog. This weekend I am planning on reading Only for the Week by Natasha Bishop. This is an arc I have. Um, it's coming out next week on the 24th. I want to read and review it. I am currently on page one and it's already mess. Let me tell you, this is a wedding destination where the main character's sister is getting married to the main character's ex-boyfriend and she falls in love she being the main character falls in love with the best man and they have a rendezvous while out of town on this wedding excursion if that doesn't sound like the supreme mess and drama that i need right now I don't know what to tell you what it is. So like, I'm going to read this, give you all my thoughts and reaction, and we'll see how what the rest of the weekend has in store for us. Saturday everyone it is time for car chronicles because last night I spent my time getting to 50% on only for a week and I loved every minute of it like I mean I'm having a grand old time and as much as I said that this could be about drama and foolishness it's absolutely not like the premise granted it sounds titillizing right like you've got a sister, an ex, and a best friend, um, all for this one person that seems like it could sound, start drama. But these are grown adults and they should they are handling business as accordingly. So I wanna say for recommendation wise, if you were a fan of JL Seeker's novella again, um, this book would be for you. If you are a fan of Lady Marie's Worth It, this book would be for you because it has a lot of those elements or tropes that we saw in both of those books. So again, it's wedding theme. Um, you've got family dynamics, specifically with a sister that's giving you the fucking blues. The interconnectedness of the relationships and just seeing everything blossom um, for a relationship where one person is truly caring for you so that's what I'm gonna talk about one thing that I absolutely love is Rome right he in the 50% that we've read he's given her every single love language like he hasn't missed a beat the man is this is how you know fiction men are superior to real men because Rome is giving her the world and asking for nothing in return but a smile on her face and her warm embrace like it is gold so you've got them going over to tulum right so they're going out of town for the wedding they decided to get there a week beforehand to enjoy time on the result resort everyone deserves a break because the bride, A. Marie, is a bridezilla, and she is really working on the bridesmaids and the groomsmen's nerve, um, and she's pretty much a monster. Uh, there's some tension in between A. Marie and the main character, Janelle, her sister, and I'm very interested to see what that's about because it's not necessarily about the fiance, Arnold. Arnold and Janelle were pretty much over their situation right they had been together for a year and they really didn't fit Amory can't be mad about that because Janelle's not paying Arnold any mind now I have a feeling that then when you know the cat gets let out of the bag and we find out that Janelle is having rendezvous with Rome shit's gonna hit the fan going back to the premise right so what you come to find out this is a he falls first or secretly pining 
Ron has always been attracted to Janelle, but he decided to stay away from her because he couldn't contain himself and he knew that he respected his friendship with Arnold. Arnold really wasn't the guy for Janelle and it comes to show, which is why, again, like I said, Janelle is over the relationship and is okay with a Marie dating her or marrying her ex. One of the things that I love about Natasha Bishop is that she is making not only the love ever so pressing, the way that he cares for her, he just wants her to um, be free with him, right? So he wants her to release all of the tension and the buildup and let him carry that weight, literally and figuratively. Like she is a plus size curvy heroine who is all woman. And he lets her know, baby, I can carry you and more. There is a scene where they're in the gym and he bench presses her. That is something I didn't know I needed. Like, please carry me, lift me. Again, physically, spiritually, mentally, I need you to be my rock. And Rome is proving that he can be that for her. Rome is a 6'5" chocolatey goodness who is a gamer and he owns his own gaming publishing company so he is a billionaire the gesture that he does for again i said he does all five love languages so gifts the man is good quality time let me find a man that's not only going to read with me he is going to get invested in the characters he's gonna read it on his own but like the quality time of us being together and just reading and enjoying each other's company top tier uh again fictional men do not equate to real men i we've got to have realistic expectations coming into these stories because baby the bar is on mars like it is out of the stratosphere and rome is hitting every one of those so i am loving the interactions between your side characters as well um there are again a set of couples they've all been friends because they all grew up together in baltimore so you've got christian who is a model a playboy he is just here having a good time on the island going through and living his carefree life but him and evie's banter like she is going to work that man i am picturing so if you know natasha and ae valdez are really good friends the banter in which i see um christian and eve going at it reminds me of ae valdez's winter character and i don't remember what the female best friend's name is but the that banter reminds me of too. like Christian and Eve whenever they get their book it's going to be explosive like she is going to hand that man his ass and I'm going to be here for it I also meant to reference that I am on my way to my local bookstores um they're having a used book sale and so I'm on my way there you are going to get some footage from the book sale and hopefully I pick up some goodies so to close out this vlog and give you all my final thoughts on only for the week but before i do that you all just saw a clip of me going to my local bookstore because they had a used book sale i actually didn't find anything but that did not stop me from purchasing books i wind up going to one of my favorite half price bookstores and i was able to get two books for 15 dollars so I think that I came out winning. Um, the first book that I picked up was Jessica Hawkins' Something in the Way. I've been hearing really good things about this from fellow booktubers. This is a forbidden romance, um, sister's fiance or sister's boyfriend. I think the steal of the day was me picking up A Lady for a Duke, which was $8 uh, by Alexis Hall. I plan to read this next month for Pride Month. Um, it has LGBTQ representation with a trans main character. Um, so this is going to be one of the reads that I'm hopeful to pick up next month because everyone has been saying really good things about this. And let's go ahead and talk about 
only for the week. Baby, I loved it. It is a five star book like when as soon as the 24th comes on I'm gonna put it on my wish list and the if the paperback is available I probably will be purchasing it because Natasha wrote her ass off like this was this was everything for me personally it's just hitting all of my spots so last time I talked to you all I was at the 50% mark and usually at the 50% mark there's a little bit of meandering and you get your happy ever after no, not with Natasha. Natasha said, full steam ahead. I've got a number of things up my sleeve. And I'm going to make sure y'all have the ride of y'all life until it's time to get off of this roller coaster. Things between Janelle and Rome continue to blossom. He continued to be the man he was in the first 50%. Like, one thing is for sure, Rome is consistent. Like, he is going to give everything his all. And this had one of my favorite things about my female main characters, right? Janelle knew, like she had a moment where she was like, let me pour into you. You give so much to me. You, you know, treat me like a queen. I want to be able to tell you and show you that I am here for you. And I just want you to be happy. I want the best for you. Let me take care of you. When I tell you that is what I look for in my female main characters in the relationship, you have these men that are going above and beyond, giving everything and more. And when you have a woman that is by your side that will build you up and will reciprocate that in a book, that automatically makes me love the couple even more. Like, I really loved Rome, but Janelle and just that one scene of her caring for him after he defended her honor... That took me. Like, that was like, okay, this is for sure a five star. Also, speaking about Janelle, because I've spent a lot of time, you know, hyping up Rum, which he honestly deserves it. But Janelle, when she was handing everybody their ass, like, when she came in and she said, hey, enough is enough. I'm sick of it. Her and her father's relationship is beautiful. I love to see that daddy's girl, to be able to see that while he is taking care of his wife, he is also responsible for the feelings of love that his, his daughter needs from him. Janelle really did not let me down when it came to making sure she stood up to her mother as well as her sister. Again, I talked about how her sister was a monster. There is a scene that I just knew was unforgivable when she told Janelle that when Emery told Janelle that she didn't believe her, I almost jumped through the pages of the of my Kindle. Like I almost said, hey, sis, square up. Me and Evie got you. We tagged him in. We we won't be having this today. Some of my favorite scenes from the second half was that wedding rehearsal, the dinner. Please invite me. Like I want the entire spread it was just had me salivating on the page but also the music selections them having this conversation about what songs that they would be walking down the aisle to i was really surprised like i said at the 80 percent mark i'm like okay cool we, you know we winding down no natasha said y'all didn't think i was going to do it but i'm going to do it like i'm going to set it all on fire and i'm just gonna sit back and watch it burn and uh, I call BS, like, the reason that Arnold gave and the reason that Amory gave and the whole, I don't believe it. That's a lie. But I'm gonna let y'all have it. You know, all's well to end well. Honestly, the book was fantastic. If you like books with wedding season, if you like um, a little bit of fam family drama, if you like pining heroes if you like you know hilarious best friends um then this book is for you if you all could do me a favor give me a bouquet emoji for flowers for wedding season see y'all next time bye